National Mall was designed by um, Pierre L'Enfant in 1791 with George Washington laying out the capital city. This particular space is about 700 acres and really represents the leadership and the living and built history of the United States. The term mall goes back further in history than you know the last 50 years when uh, a shopping mall became the default meaning of that word. The mall used to mean a pedestrian walkway or a promenade. The March on Washington really was a turning point for the country, not only for civil rights, but it was a tactical change. Clearly, the organizers understood that using the National Mall as a stage, with the White House, Congress, and the country looking on, that it would make a difference and help tell the story of why change was so needed. The March on Washington 50th anniversary really talked about the work yet to be done in our country regarding race and civil rights. The National Mall really is for everyone. It hosts over 3,000 uh, small, large uh, events each year. There are demonstrations, there are inaugurations. It's really a people's park and uh, is used every single day. Uh, my father served, had the honor to serve in World War II. He, was, uh, he lived here on the mall and they had the tents erected. I'm here at the National Mall to run in the morning. I usually do it on a Saturday morning. It's really kind of a nice space, a nice shared space in D.C. You never know who you're going to see playing out here. It tells the story of struggle, the story of freedom, the, the story of democracy. It's representative of the, the, the citizens of the U.S. collectively, and it really is the flashpoint for a lot of just make or break events and turning points in history for us. The, the biggest challenge is our, is our overuse. We, we want millions of people to come to the National Mall, and we want to host thousands of events, but we've got to change the way that we're taking care of the mall. And the National Mall really is used 24 hours a day, and even our great memorials are, are visited at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it takes a, a great effort to to keep them clean and safe for our visitors. The Trust for the National Mall has really accomplished an extraordinary amount in five years, raising $40 million for the mall's restoration. We um, have developed um, a plan to put down new turf, new irrigation system. It requires us to, to use the turf differently, to, to uh, make sure that we're caring for the uh, turf, making sure that we're watering on a special basis that we don't put materials down on the turf for prolonged periods of time that will cause the, the grass to be killed. It is really a privilege restoring the National Mall so that future generations can benefit from this extraordinary park. Park Service did a lot of research when it came to choosing a turf for, for the mall panels. But in the end, they did choose tall fescue in a bluegrass blend. The tall fescue is you know, very drought resistant, very disease resistant, very traffic resistant. That being our biggest factor is trying to combat the effects of compaction and, and use. The new panels are being built in a way that mitigates that. Not only is the turf that we've chosen really resistant to traffic and wear, the soil has been replaced uh, with something that it does not have a clay content. And then there's drainage and irrigation in the new panels. The irrigation allows us to keep grass uh, healthy and growing. And the, the soil mix on the uh, new mall panels is set to take between three and five inches of a rain an hour. Because of the traffic, there is a lot of aerating. There's, uh, there's deep tining every month. There's core aeration four times a year. We fertilize on a monthly basis using mostly organic fertilizers. We mow the turf here two to three times a week at three inches. The reality is we need more than the National Park Service. We need partners and we need volunteers and we need people across America to help us to keep this uh, iconic location the way it should be. So we rely on volunteers from anything from painting uh, benches to weeding either beds or around benches. We use them for office help, we use them for maintenance work, we use them to help with special events. We can't do it without them. I mean if it wasn't for our volunteers it, it would not look as nice. So donations are, uh, to the National Mall Memorial Parks are really important for building momentum, for engaging people who can give. It's a wonderful way 
for folks to kind of get engaged at one level who maybe can't volunteer or who live really far away. All these things show bright future and, and a great direction for the park to go in. Well, they've been renovating the panels and I think that one of their biggest challenges is not having all the right equipment to do the job. Um, they're, they're maintaining an entirely different National Mall today than they were in the past. John Deere has uh, donated to the National Mall uh, roughly 20 pieces of equipment from uh, our lawn and garden residential type machines to our golf and turf commercial type machines and even our compact utility tractors. When John Deere sends us the equipment, we have pre-delivery checklists that we go over. We check anything from wheel torque to all fluids, filters, tire pressure, um, deck level. Uh, we meticulously go through everything to make sure that all the safety devices and the operating systems are working the way they're supposed to. To make sure everything is up to John Deere specifications before it gets delivered to the customer. We want to make sure the equipment is right and ready to work as soon as it gets on site. Delivery day today was great. Uh, we started at the office at uh, 4.30 this morning. We had uh, six trucks. Uh, we all convoyed down from our office in Westminster, Maryland. It was a lot of fun. Um, unloading today took about two hours to get everything unloaded off the trucks, um, inspected with the National Park Service um, people, and uh, to make sure that everything was received in the quality condition that they would expect it and we would expect it would be as well. I got to meet a lot of nice people here at the National Park Service. I'm really excited for this partnership. Um, the training we did here today with the National Park Service went really well. Um, we did a uh, video. Uh, we went through safety operations and maintenance um, of the equipment. Um, and then after that we had a hands-on demonstration, so we actually went through some of the equipment hands-on and uh, gave them the opportunity to uh, sit on the seat and go through the safety maintenance operations of each piece of equipment. I think it's kind of cool that John Deere is part of kind of the heartland as well as kind of donating out here, so. I think that describing the National Mall as America's front yard is a very accurate way to describe it. I think that it's a place where people from all over the world, from all over the country come and, and celebrate America. The best compliment I've ever gotten is from a, a young child that said um, this is the coolest place they've ever been to and that they'd like to work here someday. And I, I think that's, that says it all.